animals are creeping out of their winter hideouts. Trees and plants are beginning to flower, and birds are migrating north to nest. Hi, I'm Gus. I'm on an island in Rhode Island. It's an interesting place to visit. In the springtime, this becomes a rookery of nesting birds. This is where we're going to start our next adventure. I guess outdoors. A beautiful day. This adventure is all about gull chicks and what it takes to be an adult. There's a lot of competition out here. Not all chicks will survive. The chicks that do survive will be the strong ones. And that makes sure the whole species is strong. Over the next four months, we're going to see what happens out here. So, let's take a look at the world of the seagulls. Today, we're visiting Rhode Island, the smallest day in the country. We noticed that a lot of birds have been nesting on this island that we call Gull Island. It's just off the coast of Rhode Island, so we'll be taking a boat ride to get there. So strap your life jacket on and let's go. There's so many birds out here, so you have to watch your step. You also have to watch out for the bug. The birds actually dive bob if you get too close to a nest. If you're really lucky, you may even get poop dive. It's a ghost way of saying, get out of here. A lot of birds means a lot of poop. It's a, it's a beautiful island, but it's a little sneaky. Here are a few things that I always put on my backpack. Binoculars help you get really close to animals. Staying hydrated is important, so I always drink a lot of water. Some birds are no fun, so that's why I pack sunblock. And bring a healthy sack like a granola bar or an apple. This island is a rookery for seagulls and corvids. That means the birds are nesting here. Over there 
is a black back goal. That one over there is a herring goal. A cool fact about the black back is that they're the largest goal in the world. Their wingspan is five feet wide and they weigh almost four pounds. It's late spring and the birds are laying their eggs. On nice days like today, the adults can leave the eggs to go get food for themselves. The sun will keep the eggs warm enough for a short time. A gull's nest is a little sloppy, but what can I say, they work. Things like sticks, seaweed, and even trash make up a good nest. Here comes a blackback gull to check her eggs. She's making sure I didn't take any. Once a year, they lay a clutch of two to three eggs. One, two, three, plop! <laughs> She's doing a little jig to get the eggs warm. Gulls warm or incubate their eggs for about four weeks. Wow, this ruin kind of looks like an old castle. But it used to be a hunting and fishing club. It burned down over 70 years ago. Now it's a good place to watch for uninvited guests like me. These are double-crested cormorants, and they pretty much just eat fish. They are the most common cormorant in North America. Cormorant's eyes are turquoise, and the skin around their face is bright orange. They make a bulky nest with sticks, and decorate it with junk. Many nests will have bird or animal bones to make the nests more attractive. Most of the time, forms like four eggs but can lay up to seven. Both male and female take turns warming the eggs. Cormorants live about six years in the wild. Some can live up to 17 years in a zoo. Another bird that's nesting right now is the piping plover. These birds are endangered. That means there's only a few piping plovers left. We saw this nest the other day on a nearby beach. The cage around the nest is to protect the eggs from predators. This is the closest I've ever been to a piping plover. The piping plover is one of the smallest plovers in the world. They're so beautiful. Their eggs look a lot like small seagull eggs, don't they?
You don't see that every day. If you look closely, you'll see other creatures on this island. Check out this caterpillar. This is a lying tiger moth. It has been eating these big, delicious green leaves. It's getting ready to make a cocoon so I can turn it into a moth. This is what the lied tiger moth looks like when it's an adult. That's a pretty cool caterpillar. I'm gonna let him go now. While visiting, my friend Will showed me a plant with a surprise. It's called a touch-me-not plant. The flower looks a lot like an orchid. It also has these pods with seeds in them. If you touch them, they'll explode! It's just one more cool thing that you find in Rhode Island in the summer. I can't believe it! These eggs are hatching! This chick has just hatched out of its shell. It takes a lot of energy to break out of an egg. That chick hatched from this egg. This is one tired chick. Once a chick recovers from some serious egg breaking, they look like fuzzball. Not only does that fuzz make them look cute, but it's also camouflage. Even though they're safe from land predators, they still have to worry about bird predators. The most important thing for a chick is food. How do they get food? Mom and Dad deliver it. The parents bring back food in their gullets and throw it up. It's called regurgitation. It makes it a lot easier for the chicks to eat. The chick picks at the red spot on the parent's beak. And this makes the parent throw up the food. <laughs> Most of the summer, gull chicks will get their food from their parents. As the chicks get older, they have to find food for themselves. The parents will slowly stop feeding them, so they have to find a way to eat so they can survive. One way is hunting in tidal pools. There are crabs, snails, and even seaweed to eat. Behind me is a tide pool. Let's go see if we can find some crabs. We're looking for the ancient shore crab and the green crab.
To fly though, we need to turn over some rocks. The trick is to keep your fingers. Got him. This right here is an Asian shore crab. One of these crabs is a pretty good meal, but four or five is even better. For these gold chicks, it takes a lot of energy to learn how to fly. So it's important to eat any time they can. So what makes a chick want to fly? Escaping from predators is one reason. Okay, where was I? Oh, what makes chicks want to fly? Avoiding a fight may be another reason. Or maybe they just want to be like their parents. Whatever the reason, they need to fly to survive. Because the real food is out there somewhere. The chicks will go through an ugly duckling stage. That's when they have feathers and fuzz. They get all their feathers four weeks after they hatch. Once the chicks get all their feathers, they are ready to learn how to fly. Sometimes it just takes a good wind, then off they go. to fly, the chicks will return to this island to rest and be fed. The chicks will rely on their parents for seven weeks, so it will be almost four months before these chicks can survive on their own. That's the whole summer. for a boat ride.
We spent a lot of time on Gull Island. Everything I saw was brand new to me. Seeing the chicks hatch was so cool. And how often do you get to see a plant that explodes? One of the best parts was seeing how the parents fed the chicks. That was so gross, but really cool. I learned a lot too. It's not easy to live in the wild. As a gold chick, you have to take on those challenges or you just won't make it. I started first grade last week and meeting kids is not easy. But just like the gold chicks, I had to take that challenge. And I'm glad I did, because now I have some new friends. It's pretty cool being a kid. Well, that was quite the adventure. I'm heading home to see what's for dinner. I hope it's not regurgitated fish. Well, I'll see you next time on Gus Outdoors. Dad, I'm not doing birds again. I'm tired of being pooped on. How about fish?